Thank you, everyone, and welcome to this series titled Youth Are Pillars of Society, co hosted by the International Community, uh, the International Baha'i Community, and the United Nations Major Group for Children and Youth. Uh, and happy Earth Day. What a great way to start uh, our day today together. My name is Lily Hunzimana, and I serve as a representative to the United Nations for the Baha'i International Community. Before we begin, I would just like to share a few housekeeping notes. We will be recording this session as well as the breakout rooms. And now just a few words about the series as a whole. We have outlined three goals uh, for, the, for these four events. First, to appreciate how far we have come in increasing the participation of young people in decision-making processes at the UN. Second, to explore the existing gaps. And then lastly, to create a space welcome to all to brainstorm about the future of youth participation and the decade of action. Throughout the pandemic, we have observed the leadership, the initiation, and action-oriented responses of young people to the crisis in different parts of the world. We have much to learn from the altruism, zeal, and enthusiasm of young people. Their ability to work well together across sectors, offer support where needed, and collaborate effectively. As a matter of fact, this is evident in this series itself as we are collaborating with the MGCY. So the spirit, which we see so clearly in this generation can be embodied by anyone irrespective of age. The international community has taken steps to acknowledge the distinguishing characteristics of youth, uh, gradual as the steps have been. As early as 1965, the UN recognized the important role that youth play. It was at that time that the General Assembly endorsed a resolution geared towards youth on promoting the ideas of peace mutual respect and understanding, and understanding, stating at the time that the energies, enthusiasm, and creative abilities of the young should be devoted to the material and spiritual advancement of all peoples. A number of steps were taken in the years that followed to formally recognize the role that youth play in achieving the UN's goals. No doubt some of you were there during these important moments, and we stand to benefit from your insight and the legacy of that work. The advances made in raising youth voices at the UN are a result of these continuous efforts. A few examples of these moments over the last 20 years include, but are not limited to, uh, the creation in 1992 of the Major Group for Children and Youth, the establishment of the Office of the Secret Secretary General's Envoy on Youth in 2013, and of course, key resolutions 2250 and 24. Uh, 2429 on youth peace and security passed in 2015 and 2018, respectively, by the United Nations Security Council. These advances were important in acknowledging the role of youth. Yet acknowledgement, important as it is, must go beyond further if we're to truly harness the capacities of, of young people. We are in need of spaces where member states, UN agencies, and members of civil society can co-create a coherent vision on how to further involve young people, a space that can contribute to realizing the vision of the Youth 2030 strategy, which calls for a world in which the human rights of every young person are realized, that ensures every young person is empowered to achieve their full potential, and that recognizes young people's agency, resilience, and their positive contributions as agents of change. It is a hope that this series will help us to visualize what such a space might look like. The desire for increased participation of youth is not just a call for tokenistic representation, but it is a recognition of the value that a diversity of perspectives brings to any endeavor. The proximity of young people to the challenges their peers experience can only add to the decision-making processes uh, under the this does not mean that young, that youth uh, should simply be given more space to make decisions uh, in isolation from others. Drawing on a full range of perspectives requires younger and older generations to work shoulder to shoulder in pursuit of, of solutions to the challenges facing society. In this decade of action, let us take decisive steps across generations and sectors to enable the meaningful participation of youth beyond a formal recognition of their value. Present circumstances are pushing us to realize that we stand to lose an opportunity 
to adequately prepare current and future generations for the rigors of the challenges ahead if we do not bring them into the fold. We must harness the full potential of actors of all ages to prepare young people who are ready and eager to generously share their experiences and do their part to contribute to securing our common future. Our consultations over the course of this series will feed into an output document that can be used as a tool to contribute to the process of creating a coherent youth voice at the UN. Our panelists today will set the stage for this consultation, providing us with key policy background to inform our conversations. So with that, I will introduce our first intervention. We will now share with you a recorded message from the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, Ms. Jayatma Wikariya Badnake. 